my challenge. I'm trying to reach the rating of 2000 within 30 days. And guys, today's games are incredible. Watch the entire video. You won't regret it. Enjoy. Okay, let's go. Game started. E4 and D5. Should I go for the interballistic? <laughs> no, I think like that gambit, uh, you can just try out at very low level now we are going to take 1500 it's really good a good chess player so no i don't try that so the queen is here we will play knight there attacking this queen winning a tempo the queen goes there and now i'll develop my bishop out attacking a very vulnerable point the pawn on f7 Knight there is protecting the queen. I will play the move d3. I want to set up a very fun idea to keep going. Bishop d2. Now, this queen has to be already very careful. Oh my god, I'm already winning. I I'm already just completely winning. So, should I play knight there or knight here? Um, well, the queen has, no matter what, the queen has that square. And this looks much better. This is why you don't have to go with the queen out too early i mean this is a big problem now this knight is so smart such a smart piece deserves green because he's controlling those squares at the same time plus attacking this one sorry he's not controlling the square the bishop is attacking uh the queen there okay now bishop there is played oh actually i didn't think about it but i think i should be winning anyway i can take knight takes and i can play the move a3 Yes, guys, I mean, we might win really quickly here. A3, and this knight is lost. This rook is protected by the queen, and my opponent cannot do anything in order not to lose, to save this knight. Okay, they took here, but that's just a pawn that you're going to take. We take back... Oh, uh, wait, maybe we take back like this. Ha! Because this is still under attack, and now we take also this, so we took two pieces. Okay, they are taking there, but that's not such a big deal. I'll just develop... Okay. <laughs> well, this was 11 moves. Let's see if we can do better. Every time I see... Let's see, let's see if I can do better. The game lasts 69 moves. <laughs> okay, E4, D4. We go for the center. This is the modern variation. If you're looking for an opening... That you can play against d4, against c4, against e4, against any first move of white. You can try the modern defense as a possible opening. But you have to study a little bit. So, I I don't know. It's your choice. Uh, We go with the knight out. This e6 surprised me a little bit. Because usually, you don't want when you push g6, you don't want to push e6. You want to push b6. Because with the move e6, you're leaving all these squares a little bit weak. Okay, I will go very aggressive with three pawns in the middle of the board. I'm going to follow up with knight there and then bishop here. Perfect, and then queen there. Uh, every time my opponent... Okay, I think my opponent is going for some sort of hippo defense. After the knight goes there, this is the so-called hippo. I'll just castle complete my development and then we'll see how to go on. Uh, it could be a very good idea to try to play the move g4. I mean, I'm going with all the pawns. Should I push also the fifth one? I mean, I'm, I already won connected four. I might even win connected five. And the idea of attacking like this... Okay, my opponent can play this move. So I will actually play the move a3 just to block this pawn there. Uh, because this bishop is a strong piece. And I don't want my opponent to get much. So what do they want to do right now with the move c6? They want to play e5 and then eventually b4. Now, is this a problem? Well, not such a big problem, but I want to act fast. So can I play the move f5 immediately? Bing, boom, bada, boom, gang. So the pawn would be hanging at this point. But does it help me? I mean, not sure. This is also another move that we can consider. So bing, bada, bam. I feel like my pieces are still not so effective. What about d5? Because after this we can take... I love this move. Bing, boom, bang, boom. But this is also hanging. Well, then we might just go with this. But then we are allowing this. Okay, you know what? We sacrifice a pawn. We go with the move f5 and after pawn takes all the traits. We don't take back the pawn, but we'll just activate the rook attacking the bishop immediately. Now, if they take, we go with the rook. And there we go. So we are a pawn down, but those pawns are very sad. My rook is very happy attacking this bishop. 
And this is what we have to do in chess, have happy pieces. And then things are going really well for you. Um, the rook has protected this bishop, but if I play bishop there, Wait, the rook is protected by the knight. I take it back. I'm not going to play any of those moves. Bishop c4 could be an option. Attacking this point and maybe then knight g5. Yes, guys, I love this move. And if d5, um, we can just take once. And after pawn takes... Okay, b5, we go all the way back here. Let's shortly consider if we can take on f7. Bing, bong, bang. Ooh, wait a second. Ah, wait a second, let's throw this bishop immediately. Because after king takes, we give a check, and after the king goes back, we have knight here, and we're attacking the queen and this bishop at the same time. This is a big problem for my opponent. Can you see the move if the king dares to go on f6? It's like a square that says, okay, you're not going with the knight on e6 because the king would just take it. So what do I do if the king goes so wild all the way to f6? I think after king f6, I will go with the move e5. Check. Well, the king can just go there, and if the king goes there, they lose a queen. Because this is a discovery check with the rook, and the knight is attacking the queen. But after king here, king there, our opponent can also take. But I just take back is a check, and this queen is also hanging. Because I can take, rook takes, and I take with my rook, and I win at least a rook. But the point is that after all the trades, still the king might have to go on g6 and then I win a full queen. Now, my opponent has really to go back. Ooh, hoo -hoo, but they don't go back and they go for the fire. We just throw the movie five. And that's game over, I think. Let me drink my opponent's tears. The king cannot go anywhere. I mean, they can take, but then I have fork. They can go here. I have a discovery check. Yep. Uh, we might see a resignation now. GG's. This was 19 moves. Really a cool game. Next. D4. Should we go for the angle and gambit again? Oh my god. If I lose this game, I will have to play. Okay, that was a success, guys. That was an ins incredible success. Because my opponent pre-moved c3 imagine if they would have pre-moved the london system this is amazing if your opponent is a london system player and they just pre-move you just win a piece <laughs> and it could have happened but they played the move c3 should i keep sacrificing or not okay i will play knight there it's um it's interesting so now they could push attacking my knight but they go here at this point i can't i can't not play the move e4 attacking the knight with tempo the knight goes back. I could even push there. I could even push there. Ooh. 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 I could do that. I will play this move. Because, like, after, after being bung, I would have nearly checkmate there if my bishop would be here. But my opponent will have time to protect. Because after being bung, I have to play bishop there. And then the knight goes there. And I have no longer this check. It would have been a good trick. But we don't play for tricks. We play d5 protecting the pawn and now they play this but look at this bishop is dying inside for all the italian friends this is <laughs> this is the post office so and no shame for that my mom has a post office so but still they do nothing okay what do they do here uh what do we do here we'll develop our pieces right but before developing i will play an essential move which is the move f5 which is already set, uh, setting, settling, setting, blah, blah. I don't know, setting the standard for what is happening next. You remember when I told you that the pawn structure, when the pawns are blocking the middle of the board, the pawn structure is like an arrow. It's telling you where you have to go with the attack. And this arrow is pointing towards the queen side, so my opponent should not play this move and attack, try to attack on the king side, because I just played g6, and I said to the queen, goodbye, get back home. I win a tempo, maybe my bishop can also go in fianchetto. Instead, I'm going towards this side. So the move f f f f f f f f five <laughs> is important to try to play the move f four at some point. Now my opponent might be in big, in huge danger because I see those two squares that are really weak, and the knight could sneak on b four. Now after knight b four, my opponent can simply play the move here and cover everything. So we do not do that. 
What do we do? We just bring a knight out, protecting this pawn. It's all good. Okay, now they offer a free pawn. <laughs> so the free cheese macaroni we have learned to take. We are also threatening some very, very nasty things. We're happy. Knight on b3. Ah, that's a check and the king can no longer castle. And after the king moves, we take here by winning another pawn, attacking a knight. Oh my cheese macaroni. Okay, the knight goes there. But after this sweet little move, well, the knight can still go back there. But I like this sweet little move. Oh, wait, the knight is uh, attacking. Okay, but no problem. Uh, I like because I can play the move c5. And I'm opening up the center where it's hurting for my opponent because the king is stuck on d2. So after pawn takes, I would already have all the discovery checks of the ward. And I'll play this. I mean, unless I have checkmate. But I'll play this and I'm winning a queen, and this one might be a very quick resignation. I know what you're going to write in the comment, in the comments, but I will not tell you. I will let you write this. <laughs> okay, this is a double check. The king goes there. Do we have checkmate? Uh, why is this not mate? Oh, the king can still go there. We might not have checkmate, guys. I'll just take the queen, you know? Uh, that's, that's fun. Okay, they take back. We take here. Uh, we might have a checkmate one day, but that day is not yet today. Knight out. We take. Then we take. Ooh, I blundered a piece. <laughs> uh, it's not a blunder because the rook is hanging behind. Oh no, my bishop. Okay, there we go. It's time to end this game. Bing, boom, bang. Do you see a bing, boom, bang? <laughs> I see a bing boom bang bam boom bam bam. So bing boom bam spam boom bam bam. <laughs> this is next level spin boom bam. <laughs> Let's pre move it. <laughs> GG's. A new game. We are playing a 1626. Night out, we go for the center. I think we have played maybe what? <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> they are this is the interballistic gambit. Oh my god. <laughs> this is the intercontinental ballistic gambit, right? They are trying to, to trick us. Okay, I will defend this pawn. So the idea of this gambit is that now my opponent sacrificed a pawn, but there is a little bishop that is very nasty here. Because after the move h6, they can sacrifice the knight, and after king takes this bishop is sliding to g6, and my queen is suddenly exposed with the white queen, and I lose. So the only thing that you have to know here is to play the move knight c6. Like this, the knight is protecting the queen, you have an extra pawn, and that's it. <laughs> Okay, no, they are protecting this knight. We shall just develop. We are attacking the queen. We develop with tempo. Also, we are going to play the move e5 and then develop this bishop and maybe castle long or short. Not sure. Not sure yet. F3 makes sense. I will go back here and I'm protecting this pawn one more time. Now I'm really out of problem. Out of trouble. I could play the move h6 now just for fun, but I won't. I won't. I will play either e6 or e5. Now, e5 is a little bit more aggressive. e6 is a little bit more conservative. What move do you think I'll play? Of course, e5. <laughs> I mean, have you, ever, have you ever seen a game of myself playing solid? That's very rare. Ultra rare. Okay, the queen goes away. They're attacking this pawn. I mean, I could give a check and then castle. But you know, I really want to go for long castle. Because then I have like h6, g5, g4. I can do nice things there. Okay, I will play bishop check here. And after bishop e3, I might just play queen d6. I'm not the first one to trade. Okay, the king just moved there. We just developed the queen here or there. I prefer this move just because my bishop is like this protected. And there is no problem of knight there. So we can simply go for long castle here. I just had to double check because remember, every time you go... Long castle with this knight here, this pawn is unprotected. So after bishop takes, queen takes, I have to say thanks to this bishop because this pawn is still protected. So I had to shortly uh, check that. Okay, we take. 
and this pawn is protected. Okay, so my opponent is going for lots of trades. I understand. I will just move my queen back. Shoop. Okay, because now, uh, if I would have traded, they can just go with the knight there, they have a super knight. Instead, like this, after this, I can take with the pawn. It might seem like very strange because I'm creating at weakness two double, double pawns, but I'm opening also the g file. And remember, when there are opposite side castling, you want to attack. So it seems like very interesting. Okay, now they go with the knight there, so they don't trade. I will go with the bishop back because I don't want to trade the bishop for the knight, but I'm happy to trade bishop for bishop. And after bishop takes, I'm taking with the h pawn, and then the h file is being opened up. Now, guys, this is a very nice check. If I take, the knight is going to be activated. So is it a smart trade? No. So I just move the king away. My next move, I wanted just to say, is going to be knight d4. Because with the knight here, I'm attacking this bishop and I'm attacking this pawn. So my opponent is kind of forced to take. Now I'm taking here, opening up the h-file and this pawn is also hanging. Now we could take that pawn. I mean, that's a free, free cheeks macaroni. We do it! The queen has to be moved and then we'll simply go back. No matter where the queen goes, we'll simply go back with the knight at the center of the board. Remember, knight in the center makes your opponent surrender <laughs> i literally made this quote it's not a quote that i took from anyone else it's my quote there is just a little problem that whatever piece you put in the center you can always make your knight surrender and it's actually good because every piece is more active in the center of the board uh but the knights are are extreme because a knight on the side on the edge controls just two squares instead the knight in the center um is controlling like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight squares. Okay, so now we don't move this knight away, but what do we do? I mean, I will play rook here. I'm just going to double the rook on the h file. I see a potential checkmate. <laughs> do you also see it? I could go with my rook there. h3, oh sorry, h3, and then I go with the queen here. And then I'm sacrificing the rook, pawn takes, the queen takes, king goes here, and queen h2 is checkmate. Okay, they went with the rook here, they are trying to trade. I don't want to trade, I might have to. Okay, let's play f f5, f5. After this, we take there. With the queen, I, I bet my opponent will play this because they are threatening mating too. And then we have to defend it somehow. We'll play the move c6, I guess. Oh, okay, they play this move. Then, in this case, I just go with the rook here. I'm threatening mate. And if this pawn moves, this knight is hanging. Beep. Okay, now it's going to be mate in a few moves. Unless my opponent sacrifices you. <gasps> oh, no, why did you? No. <laughs> it would have been a, such a cute checkmate. 92 attacking the queen and then we sacrifice on h3. Okay, now we just take back. We have an extra rook, so it should be still a very quick checkmate. We can go with the rook here. We are going to uh, jump on e1 next. And GG's. Alright guys, a very last game for this video. Uh, I will play the move d4 and I will do something new for this video, which is a new gambit. Uh, some gambit that I... Ooh, no way. <laughs> I wanted to do the Black Murdimer, but I'm playing against the Karakan. Okay, I will show you a very nice variation. It's called the Tal variation against the... Uh... Okay, F6 is not part of my plan. Usually, Black is going with the Bishop out, to then play the movie 6. So the idea of the Karakan is that you want first to bring this Bishop out before playing the movie 6 to bring the other Bishop out and you don't want to have any piece block there forever. Now, f6 is a bit strange because this, queen, this king is going to be um, weak. I think I should just develop my pieces, right? So if I go there, the pawn cannot be captured because after queen here, g6, I snap my bishop. So this f6 is not a good move. Now, yeah, bishop there is the move that has to be played uh, because after queen h4, they have at least bishop f7. But now I'm threatening f5, bishop f... Ooh! <laughs> f5, bishop f7, and e6, everybody. This is called domination. They have already to sacrifice the bishop. Oh my god. Oh my grub. Sorry, I don't want to name the 
name the name of God without reason. Okay, I'll take here. The knight has still to move. Ooh. Ooh. <gasps> Guys, I have a checkmate with a bishop after g6. I sacrifice the queen and they take. Oh my god. <laughs> That's hot. <laughs> oh my god. Guys, this video cannot get any better of this, so I have to end it here. Make sure to like the video and to subscribe to the channel. 80% of my of the people that watch this don't subscribe, so please do it. It's free and we can get to 100k before I get to 2000. That would be a dream. And once we get to 100k, there will be lots of surprises. So please just click that button. It's free. It's there. Do it. Click it. Please, come on. If this video gets more subscribes than usual, I will do something crazy. I will do one push up. I will do it now. I did it! Okay, subscribe. See you next time and watch this video. This one. Bye.